All right, so average rate of change. So the formula for average rate of change is f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. So this represents the average rate of change on the interval from a to b. Uh, and we're told that the a value and b value can't be equal because if they are, we can see that our denominator would be zero. But what is the average rate of change actually? So if we take a look at this, in the numerator, we're looking at the difference between our function at the point B and at A. So these are just the Y values at B and A. So the top part is really just this length here, this length here, which is the change in our function F of X. And then the bottom part, B minus A, those are the changes in the X values. It's B minus A. So it's really just this part here. And that's the change in our x values. Now, we've seen this before. Where have we seen the change of f of x divided by the change of x? Yes, this is just the slope formula. This is slope. Now, what is the average rate of change the slope of? Well, the average rate of change is the slope of the line that intersects our curve at the two points of our interval. So it intersects our curve at x equals a and x equals b. So that's how you would calculate average rate of change. You would just find the slope using this formula. So let's try one. So we want to find the average rate of change for the function f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 4. And we're going to do this on the interval from 0 to 2. So 0 is a and 2 is b. So the average rate of change formula says f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So we want to find the average rate of change here. So first, we have to evaluate our function at b. So what is f of b? So that's negative 2 times 2 squared plus 4. That's f of b minus f at a. So plug 0 in. Uh, negative 2 times 0 squared plus 4. All of this is being divided by b minus a, so 2 minus 0 and then simplify. So 2 squared, that's 4. 4 times, so we have this here, right? 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. And then we have negative 8 plus 4. Um, again, 0 squared here is 0. Negative 2 times 0, that's just 0. And so it's minus 0 plus 4. All of this is being divided by 2. So negative 8 plus 4, that's negative 4. Uh, 0 plus 4 is positive 4. So we have negative 4 minus a positive 4. All of this divided by 2. So we get negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. So the average rate of change on the interval from 0 to 2 is this right here, negative 4. Um, so let's look at it on another interval. So we're going to use the same function. We're going to use this same function here. And we're going to evaluate the average rate of change on a different interval. And we're going to see how is it changed, right? Because when we talk about slope, typically we're talking about the slope of a line. But this is a curve. Clearly, it's not linear. So this average rate of change is probably going to be a little different. So let's find the average rate of change on this interval. So again, it's f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. So let's substitute uh, 1. So this, this is a here. Negative 2 is a. And 1 is b. So substitute. So plug in 1 here. So it's f of 1. So it's negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4. 
all this minus our function evaluated at a, so negative 2 times negative 2 squared plus 4. All of this is being divided by 1 minus a negative 2. 1 minus a negative 2. Okay. So 1 squared, that's 1. Uh, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So we have negative 2 plus 4 here. And then we have negative 2 squared. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 times 4, that is negative 8. So we're subtracting negative 8 plus 4. All of this is being divided by 1 minus a negative. So that becomes plus uh, 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And then simplify. So we have negative 2 plus 4, that's 2. Um, negative 8 plus 4, that's negative 4. So it's 2 minus a negative 4. All of this divided by 3. So 2 minus a negative 4, that's 2 plus 4. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the average rate of change over the interval from negative 2 to 1 is 2. So that's how you find average rate of change. It's essentially just the slope of the line that intersects our curve at the points where x is equal to those two values.